Oh, Lordy. The results for the 100 draft are in, and they are interesting. Stick with this, and I'll give you an update on who's been picked for the men's and women's squads for the 2022 tournament. All right, then. Welcome back. This is The 100 Club, and my name is Tom. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. This is the home of the 100 and short format cricket on YouTube Owl or your preferred podcast provider. And if you're coming back, then great. We love having you here. You're a subscriber. If you'd like to subscribe, just hit the button down below and that would be much appreciated. And similarly, do feel free to comment, like, etc. Because we want to know what your opinions are going to be on what has been a pretty interesting day in the 100. Uh, today has seen the announcement of the draft that was conducted behind closed doors yesterday. Uh, and the signings that have been taking place for some time on the women's squads uh, all announced today. That's the theory, at least. It's been done in a really weird way, though, because firstly, there were leaks. Uh, some of the cricket uh, outlets, Quick Info, the cricketer both had uh, tips on um, who was going to go in the first round of the men's draws. And secondly, it was done in such a, a clumsy fashion. There wasn't anything TV coverage, anything like that. It was done by a live text blog on the 100 website, all a bit clumsy, uh, over f uh, you know three hours. However, not long ago, the final pick were, uh, was announced. Uh, and so you know we can now have a look at uh, what the squads might look like come the summer. But before I do that, there's also the slight oddity in that it is clear that some teams have made some very odd decisions that can only really be a result of, I think, the availability of players this summer. We know that the international schedule is going to be really uh, confused, really difficult for teams. And some te teams, I think, have just made picks based on who they think is going to be around. They've clearly been talking to the agents and the like and made those picks because we have seen that some of the big stars that registered for the tournament just haven't been picked up. That's the likes of Baba Azam, not picked. David Warner, not picked. Aaron Finch, not picked. Um, you know, the list goes on. So, you know, this is a, a an odd set of results in that sense. But importantly, I do think some amazing talent has been brought into the tournament, both on the men's and the women's side. Uh, and I think it's going to be a better competition this year than it was last. And that's important as this competition enters its second year. OK, enough. Let's start with a quick look at the London spirit. Uh, who were picking first. Who have they picked up? Well, on the men's side, they had two picks at the 125k bracket. And the first pick overall went to them, and they used it on Kyron Pollard, the experienced, huge-hitting West Indian, uh, decent bowler too, clearly IPL experience, Caribbean Premier League, etc. Will be a fantastic addition to the top competition. Uh, clearly penciled in against the Welsh Fire, of course, last year. But... The big question mark with him is how much is he going to play? We know the New Zealanders are going across to the West Indies in August. We know the Caribbean Premier League starts in the end of August. How much time is he going to spend at Lords playing for the London Spirit? Big question there. But if he's there, absolutely an improvement to that squad. The second of their 125k picks, that was the 11th pick overall, went to Liam Dawson, the left arm spin bowler, previously uh, down with Hampshire, some brave, um, a great player, absolutely, previously on the involved with the England squads, um, but 125k, that feels perhaps a little rich for me for his talent, but um, you know they clearly see something, and not least, they see his availability. So let's see what he can do on that Lord's pitch. Okay, Elsewhere in their, in their recruiting, I think they've made some really smart choices. They've got Riley Meredith as an overseas Aussie, coming over, really uh, good prospect, fast bowler. We've got John Thompson, a fantastic youngster uh, who's had a good couple of seasons, including the Big Bash, uh, wasn't retained by the Northern Superchargers, slightly surprisingly. And they brought in some experience in Daniel Bell Drummond, previously with the Birmingham Phoenix, uh, and Chris Wood, the, the bowler as well. So overall, I think it's better, but they didn't. Uh, they'd have done well to make it worse for the London Spirit, given last year's season. Uh, we'll see how they get on. A lot will ride on Karen Pollard's availability, though. And also, you'll note that they've got two picks left. That's the Vitality wildcard pick, which is made right up to the tournament, uh, and a, another overseas wildcard pick. That's a new addition this year. We'll see where that one goes. On the women's side, um, 
some big names have come in. And most impressively, they've got two World Cup winners, recent World Cup winners in Beth Mooney uh, and Megan Shutt. Beth Mooney, the wicketkeeper batter, uh, and Megan Shutt, the, 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 the bowler, great additions. But even better than that for me, uh, Amelia Kerr, the superstar uh, Kiwi, um, going to bring a huge amount of that squad. That looks like a notably improved squad by my, uh, by my reckoning. Um, still a bit of work to be done for me uh, to get to the very top. But definitely a better effort from them. And they've got a few spaces left still to use there. So for me, a uh, decent effort by the Spirit. But um, yeah, not quite sure about the Kyron Pollard pick overall, first of all. So second up in the men's draft were the Welsh Fire. Uh, and they had the second pick and they used it controversially on Joe Clark. Joe Clark, the uh, exciting young batter. He's been around the fringes of the England squad for a while. Uh, then clearly had a very controversial incident where he was involved in um, some pretty horrible text activity on uh, WhatsApp, uh, I believe it was actually, um, and has kind of been in the uh, in the hinterland for some time. Let's hope he's uh, grown up. He's um, absolutely reformed himself from that because he's now on a 125k um, contract with the Welsh Fire uh, and has had you know decent form recently. Had a great uh, big bash uh, down there with the Melbourne Stars. So second overall for Joe Clark. Um, interesting. Joined by another big uh, hitting uh, star who perhaps has had a less decent recent form, but a favourite for the Welsh Fire from last year, Tom Banton, again at 125k. Uh, two interesting signings. Both are going to have a lot of availability. We know that. And if they get that top six out, that is, you know, exciting. They've got Ollie Pope, Johnny Bairstow, Joe Clark, Tom Banton, Ben Duckett, uh, and uh, David Miller, the South African, very experienced T20 international uh, in there. That is a top six to be feared, I think. Add to that two overseas bowlers. You've got Adam Zampa coming in at the 100k backet. Fantastic addition, I think, uh, the, the spinner. Uh, and Nassim Shah, the, the very exciting young Pakistani quick. Um, really excited to see how he goes. I think that could be a really uh, a decent draft from the Welsh Fire. Again, you know, definitely an improvement on their squad from last year. On the women's side, uh, the big name at the top there, Tammy Beaumont, the England international opening bat. A great addition, but backed up by huge amounts of experience. Rachel Haynes, six times World Cup winner with Australia. Annabelle Sutherland just won the World Cup as well. Uh, and then you've got Fran Wilson and Alex Hartley, both been involved uh, in the England lineup as well in the past. So lots and lots of experience coming into that Welsh Fire lineup. They've clearly lost Sarah Taylor from the playing lineup, at least. Uh, we'll see how it gets on. Decent. Uh, Hayley Matthews in good form on the World Cup. But, you know, I'll be interested to see how they get on. Again, I think an improvement. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what they can manage. Okay, next up on the picks was the Manchester Originals, uh, and they uh, they perhaps went back to more where we might have expected from the draft. Go for a big name player with their one hundred twenty five thousand, and they did so with Andre Russell. But you could ask the question again about availability. How much of August is going to be spent over here with the hundred? But you know, look, again. Love to see it. Want to see the big hitting. Want to see his tremendous skill with the ball as well. Um, a, a, you know, a solid pick if he's on the pitch. They've added to that again, though, uh, with a young prospect that we really, really hoped who we would be drafted in Wanendu Hasaranga coming in at the 100k mark. Feels like a bargain given his form, given everything that's going on, the mystery spinner, playing in the IPL right now. Fantastic stuff in the World Cup. Um, so I think that's a really good addition. See what he can get out of that... Um, uh, that uh, Old Trafford pitch. There was another 125k slot for them, though, and that was taken by uh, a domestic player in Laurie Evans, uh, formerly of the Oval Invincibles. Didn't have a greatest of times last year. Not too bad. 125k, they're putting a lot of trust in him to uh, to deliver the goods with the bat. And I suppose if you say now that Josh Butler, out of the uh, England lineup, really, at the moment, the test lineup, uh, add to that Laurie Evans, Dre Russell, someone like... Uh, uh, you know, Colin Ackerman, you know, some D and Phil Salt, of course. You know, that looks like a really, uh, again, hard hitting, exciting batting option. So, who else did they bring in? Well, they brought in a couple of Aussies in Sean Abbott and David Worrell. Sean Abbott, not shown as overseas there, but will be a very experienced bowler. Dan Worrell actually has a British passport, so it will actually count against the domestic. Decent stuff on the Manchester Originals. On the women's side, well, uh, Perhaps less splashy headlines, uh, uh, sort of grabbing signings there, but they have brought in Deandre Drottin, who had a good campaign last year, um, you know, had a good World Cup. That would be a good addition. And the vice captain of the Kiwis, Amy Satterwhite, 
Satterthwaite. I hope I've got that right. Uh, let's see what they can do, along with a, a slew of some of the domestic stars. I think that that squad looks like it's gone down a touch from where it was last year. They had a decent uh, season last year. Um, let's see how they get on. We'll be doing some full analysis when I get Rich and Ollie back online, some squad profiles, etc. I'm sure. And maybe some guests will help us out. But for me, not sure about that match to Originals uh, women's squad as it stands. Okay, next up, Northern Superchargers. What have they done? Well, they have raided the old people's home, to put it politely. They have gone for experience with the men's squad. The 125k pick, they only had one, went to Dwayne Bravo. And we know what he can do, absolutely no doubting his commitment, his professional out outlook, etc. But he's well into his 30s now. Bring into that then, you've got Wab Riaz, another overseas pick. Um, another, you know, getting on a bit. You've got Fafta Plessy getting on a bit. It wasn't a, a draft pick, it was a retention, but still. You've got Luke Wright, you know, scored over 8,000 T20 runs, I think, in his career. That just tells you really how long his career. And Roloff van der Merwe as well, who, uh, who did all right with the London Spirit last year. But again, all a bit aged. Adam Lyde, another name there. We'll see how they get on. They did bring in Adam Hose as well, 29-year-old. Uh, an absolute baby in comparison. We'll see how they get on. But I'm not sure how long term they've been in their planning at least let's put it that way they might have a great season you know you can't rule out the likes of Adam Rashid, Ben Stokes, David Willey, Fafta Plessy of course but uh, I'm not convinced okay on the women's side well they didn't do too too much actually they only brought in Jenny Gunn uh, formerly of England uh, and Lucy Hyam the spinner as well some some solid signings no problem with that but actually they were, went with what they had it last year uh, and from the retained list in Alyssa Healy uh, who was clearly player of the tournament in the Women's World Cup recently. Laura Volfart, who's got a, an absolute shed load of runs. And Jemmy Rodriguez, who had a tremendous tournament with 100 last year. You're going to be asking a lot of those three, but that still it looks like a pretty good lineup with those three fire. They're going to be winning some games. OK, next up we have, if I can get myself working, the perils of working alone, the Oval Invincibles. OK. What have they done? Well, they had, again, one single 125k slot, and they have brought in uh, a player that they had last year, and he did pretty well, Sonal Narayan. Um, again, very, very ca uh, canny uh, bowler. Uh, again, having success in the IPL right now. You, you know what he does. Is he available? Got to hope so. Played a lot last year. I like it. Uh, I think he does a lot for that team. Um, you add to that, again, his power hitting alongside the likes of Jason Roy, Sam Billings, Sam Curran, um, you know, that's that's really decent. Uh, they've also brought in another uh, element of batting support in Riley Russo. He was registered, I think, for the 2019 tournament. Uh, didn't actually appear, but the South African opener will now, it seems, make uh, get a chance on the 100 uh, with the Oval Invincibles. And the less well-known overseas pick there is Hilton Cartwright, the spinner from Australia, sort of um, a good solid pick and see what he can get out of the oval pitch uh, as they go forward. Do I think that that's a tremendous side? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I like Sonorine, don't get me wrong, um, but I think they might well be outclassed this year um, unless they make some really smart wildcard picks. On the women's side, they've done pretty little. Obviously, uh, defending champions, they didn't need to do a lot, right? So they've got the tremendous uh, South African trio of Van Nika, Marazan Kapp, Shabnam Ismail coming back. They've got Maddie Villiers, Tasha Farrant, Alice Capsey. How do you improve that? Well, you bring in someone like Lauren Winfield Hill. Tremendous England experience, released, uh, surprisingly to me, uh, by the Northern Superchargers. Uh, Going to add a huge amount to that. And that looks like a tremendously competitive squad. I think there'll be a real um, a real handful or a real uh, strong shout to retain their title uh, come September when the, uh, the finals are, are announced. OK, next up, we have the Trent Rockets. Um, their men's squad did pretty well last year, and they kept... Uh, a good deal of their overseas talent in Rashid Khan at the 125k mark. We don't know how much he's going to play, but to that they have added again, perhaps a supply, slightly surprising name in Tom Kola Um Was it playing last year? Did all right, uh, and has had a decent a winter as well. Um, but you know, 125k feels like a lot. He's got a lot to prove at that price point. I think we do know though they clearly bring in you know the power of Alex Hales. We like David Milan experience. Uh, Lewis Gregory didn't do much last year, but he's got all the ability in the world. And they've also added Colin Monroe, who uh, again you know is a seasoned T20 vet and can add plenty in there. So they've got their core of not squad, uh, and they've added a little bit there in uh, Tom Cole, Cadmore, and uh, Colin Monroe. See, interesting to see how they go. 
On the women's side, though, they have gone for big names. And we can see that right there in the picture, Meg Lanning, perhaps the biggest of them all, uh, the Aussie superstar coming across with the World Cup medal around her neck uh, to join in alongside Mignon Dupuis, uh, who had a good World Cup. So you've got a batting lineup that's going to include the likes of Nat Simmer, Meg Lanning, Mignon Dupuis. That's going to be a real treat to watch them next year. Uh, sorry, later this year. Can't wait to see that. Alongside a bowling attack that includes Catherine Brunt. No problem with that. Uh, again, really competitive. I think the Trent Rockets look like they've improved. Let's see how much. Enough to beat the Oval Invincibles? Maybe not, but we'll see. Okay. Seventh of eight. Getting there now. Uh, we have the Birmingham Phoenix. Um, we know they retained a lot of their talent, but I think they really have gone uh, some way to improving uh, what they had with the addition principally of Matthew Wade, the wicketkeeper, World Cup winning Aussie, uh, powerful bat as well. I think he'll do good things in that Birmingham Phoenix lineup. We know that they're well coached, well drilled, uh, a great addition along the, alongside the likes of Murray Nally and Liam Livingston. We all know what they can do. On the bowling side, we thought they might have a look at some fast bowlers, and indeed that has been the case. So they brought in um uh, Kane Richardson the Aussie as an overseas player Matt Fisher very experienced uh, previously around the England squad uh, to help out Adam Milne um and you know that's that's an interesting uh, interesting couple of additions there I think um you know I like it I think it's not splashy it's solid professionals who are going to do a huge amount there that's the most interesting of the lot though is the addition of Jack Leach the England spinner test fame we'll see what he can do uh, in the 100 his first a shot at glory in the 100. On the women's side, um, they've added a couple of players in Sophie Molyneux, the Kiwi, and Sarah Callas, who was previously with the Nor Northern Superchargers. That's it. Sorry, spit it out. Uh, the uh, Netherlands International. Uh, a couple of solid signings. Uh, uh, you know, Sophie Molyneux uh, was around last year. We'll see what she can do um, uh, with the Phoenix. But, you know, that's a good squad that's based largely on, on the ability of uh, Amy Jones, Elise Perry, uh, let's we'll see what they can uh, do. Uh, still the exciting talents. And Isabel Wong, too, of course. And let's not forget Sophie Devine. Finally, the Southern Brave, who had such a good tournament in 2021. What have they done? Well, first thing, though, things first, as we suspected they might, they have brought back the fantastic left uh, handed Quinton de Kock wicketkeeper as well, of course, having a great IPL, um, vastly experienced. And uh, he, he, was, he was no. Um, he was not shy about saying how much he enjoyed his experience uh, with the 100 last year. Uh, he's going to be joining Marcus Stoinis. Um, I think that's a really solid top end of any short format cricket uh, lineup. Uh, so see what they can do. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see if they can get anything out of Jofra. Because otherwise, again, they're going to be leaning quite heavily, I think, on Chris Jordan, Tamar Mills, George Garton. Fine. Jake Lintock, can he repeat the, chip, the trip he had last year? There's a good question there. Um, interesting stuff. No Paul Sterling returns. We know the Irish uh, squad are going to be playing Afghanistan during that period. I suspect that's a strong part of why he's not in, in, in back in the Southern Brave lineup. Because otherwise, you'd surely have taken him, given his man of the match performance in the final last year. Perhaps he'll be used for the overseas uh, wildcard as well. On the women's side, well, perhaps one of the uh, the best signings across the whole tournament uh, for me so far, Talia McGrath, coming into the Southern Brave, a, a side that was already pretty fearsome. Add that to Smithy Mandana, uh, Amanda J. Wellington, Danny Wyatt, Sophia Dunkley, who had a great World Cup, Lauren Bell, who's now in the England setup. It goes on and on. So, you know, Southern Brave are going to be right there. They were finalists last year. I think that's a tremendous outfit, and they will be challenging again come September. I absolutely can see that happening right now. We'll see. Uh, when I'm proved right. And I suppose that's the last thing here. You know, just doing this on my own, a quick news update. Let us know what you think. Get the comments down below. Do you think uh, teams have mucked up? Why wasn't Babar Azam drafted? You know, is it a, a fact about, uh, you know, scheduling and the like or something else going on here? Why not David Warner? What's going on with that? Uh, why not Aaron Finch? Let me know what you think. Uh, and beyond that, we will be back, hopefully with some guests, very soon to talk more about the 100 go into a bit more depth analysis of that draft and then probably going into the squad profiles again uh, prior to the tournament kicking off on the 3rd of August 2022. Uh, if you want to stay up to date with all our content, please do hit that subscribe button. It'll be a real pleasure to take you through to the tournament and then beyond here on The 100 Club.